sports has been a part of popular culture as long as culture has been a thing. From the mighty Olympians of ancient Greece competing to reflect the demigods we still read about today, to the modern record breakers and medal earners. We've always looked to sports stars for inspiration and sports training as a way to be the best version of ourselves. Today, we're seeing tradition and technology meet head on and walk hand in hand to create the next generation of sports and players. We start off our journey with a quick dive into how one of the most well-known emerging technologies disrupts the sports and iGaming scene – Artificial Intelligence. My name is Mateusz Dłużniewski. I'm a head of product at Respo Vision. We are a Polish-based deep tech company focusing on revolutionizing sport using AI and computer vision. We have uh, provided uh, the industry with basically two kinds of products. One is uh, visual based and we can extract detailed coordinates of players thanks to computer vision and then put it into next generation visualizations. Very engaging thing that can be placed on the sportsbook website and uh, make people spend even more time on their websites. The other product that we do is uh, betting recommendations called betting hints which also utilizes AI algorithms to process historical uh, games provide people with accurate recommendations, give them reasons to bet, highlight specific bets, and therefore make their experience uh, more enjoyable when they go to the Sportsbooks website. Because traditionally, when they enter the website, there's like a wall of bets there. Uh, what we do is use AI to scan through those bets and then select the most appropriate ones. What's ahead of us is that aspect of hyper-personalization we are, we are working on right now, which will be, um, give the users even more uh, personal and tailored experience. Artificial intelligence is, has great potential in virtually any aspect of our lives. And this question can be, you know, I could answer simply, how long have you got? Because I could be talking for hours about that. We've already seen a tremendous development of computer vision over the last couple of years. There are many aspects of iGaming that it can revolutionize, starting from computer vision based uh, software for virtual games, such as you know recognizing the cards being displayed when you play online poker and having instantly calculated probabilities of events really enhances the experience of, of, the, of the online players. For example, if you're talking even land-based uh, slots or machines that are based in land-based uh, operators, they can be also equipped with uh, sensors that can detect people's get gestures, eyeballs, movement and have even more personalized experience when playing those games. More specifically coming into the sportsbooks um, area, AI and computer vision can change a lot of stuff, how people engage in sports betting activities. We actually at Respo Vision, uh, we use computer vision to analyze football games. So revealing that um, th 3D layer of data thanks to, thanks to AI and computer vision. We can provide new bettable events. We can also uh, use AI to um, provide hyper-personalization of bets, something that is, that is I think, uh, gonna happen over the next couple of years, which has tremendous positive impact of how people do sports betting and how they basically place bets. It's worth noticing that the sports betting industry is already quite data-driven. Maybe not AI specifically, but in general they use a lot of data in their pricing models, their predictive models. And I think this data-driven part is present on the back end of their operations, whereas I think in the next couple of years this shift will come to this front end, let's say, uh, part of the operations, meaning the customer facing part, that hyper-personalization that I mentioned. There is a tectonic shift uh, coming uh, to the industry, taking it from that brick and mortar kind of feel that is still there to this next level, next gen, uh, next gen feel of, of, of the betting or gaming experience. I cannot imagine how work being automated can be a bad thing. It actually has been proven that 
innovation and automation actually creates new jobs rather than take them away from people. Maybe one aspect that I can think may be a little drawback is that taking away of those randomness and uh, that, that thrill that can be somehow eradicated by automation and using like extensive using of algorithms in the whole betting experience. But I guess this is similar to the discussion that we had in football uh, some years ago about VAR. There were both supporters and, um, and people that didn't like this decision, but eventually it's got adopted to the sports uh, field. And I think a similar way with automation will happen uh, in the sports betting. And I think it, it has a great potential because basically it will, it will remove the mundane manual uh, task such as manual annotating of, of sporting events and allow people to focus more on more creative uh, tasks rather than those manual manual tasks. So I think mm, a lot of good a, a lot of good things will be brought to the industry by the use of automation. With the upcoming AI revolution covered, we now move on to another technology overhauling the industry's left, right and center, blockchain. My name is Samir Seric and I'm a CEO of Blocksport, uh, a Swiss sports tech company. I'm also an investor, philanthropist and entrepreneur who has been uh, for a long time interested in the space of blockchain in particular. The potential of uh, intersection between blockchain and the sports industry is absolutely huge. Uh, I think we've seen very much what's happened during the pandemic times, whereby the sort of uh, uh, the emergence of technology across the world in any industry has been huge. And as we all know that the sports clubs in particular uh, were massively hit because uh, there was the absence of the spectators, there was absence of fans, and uh, the ability to actually be able to engage with their audience is something that was fast-tracked very much during the pandemic times. And, and I think that that sort of power of technology, and especially blockchain technology, is here now to stay. I think lots of uh, football clubs in particular, but other sports uh, clubs as well, have realized that it's no longer enough just to offer tickets for the stadium uh, gigs. It's not enough to offer jerseys. It's very, very important they actually develop their digital strategy for fan engagement. And this is, this is where I felt, you know, uh, Blocksport has such a uh, unique uh, solution whereby it's not only about jumping on the bedwagon of offering fan tokens, NFTs, but it's really starting from a few years ago with development of the fan engagement mobile platform, which is really designed to help clubs not only engage with their fans more, but also create new revenues. If we think about uh, what's becoming very important is content in the sports industry. And uh, in the absence of the ability to be able to sell tickets at the stadiums, uh, there's the sporting organizations around the world had to go one step further. And this is where you know, we at Block Sports sit in a very, very unique position and are able to offer clubs, leagues, federations and athletes that platform that actually brings it all in one. The whole ecosystem as opposed to silo effect and something that is actually was born uh, with the eSports initially but has now transcended into the traditional sports too. Digitalization tokenizations have become hugely important for uh, sports clubs and sports entities to get closer to their fan base. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, fan base is hungry and thirsty for a lot more than what uh, it, it used to have and, and used to be on offer a few years ago. Uh, the ability to go one step further in the gamified side of the element uh, and, and, and offer the fans through the mobile app application the ability to actually also earn as they play. Uh, gamification is becoming hugely, hugely important. We've seen it in many other industries and the sports industry is no different. Being on the precipice of mass adoption, blockchain technology is definitely one of the main pillars for tomorrow's sports sector. One last stop on our journey is the rise of an unlikely competitor, the growing esports sector. There are uh, new technologies that are really much emerging uh, on top of the 
uh, fan tokens on top of NFTs. And uh, the buzzword in that particular instance is metaverse. And, and, and you know, we're all talking about metaverse. We're all talking about creating digital stadiums uh, uh, in, in the digital world. We're talking about creation of the digital players. And I think the beauty of metaverse is something that will help fans feel a lot more engaged and a lot closer to their beloved clubs, to their heroes uh, in players, and so to basically uh, be given more an, uh, an opportunity through the power of virtual reality, uh, AI, machine learning, to really get into the space and feel more appreciated. I think if you think about the traditional fans of going to the stadiums, what are the opportunity for these fans, fans to ever meet the coaches, ever meet the captains of the team, ever meet the sort of their heroes? Next to nothing. Impossible unless you know somebody very close to the club management and club ownership. So the ability to uh, basically move from the real world into the digital world through the power of metaverse, through the power of uh, you know, digital uh, counterfeit is, is something that is very much uh, on the cards. Uh, we at Block Sports as well are pushing the agenda of Metaverse. By the same time, we're telling the clubs that are asking us about uh, what's happening in that space to really slow down the development and their progress. Because you first have to digitalize yourself, you have to tokenize yourself, you have to commercialize yourself, very much uh, monetize your uh, assets. As a former chairman of the biggest Bosnian football club, from which Edin Dzeko came out of, I remember when I was inaugurated as the chairman of the club, first thing I said to the fans is, us at the management level come and go, and you as the fans will forever be part of the club uh, heritage and the club sort of movement. So it's our responsibility to ensure that whatever innovation we bring to the club, benefits the fans. We really want to push the education of the operators of the clubs, education of the fans, because it's very, very important that whoever enters the world of tokenization, digitalization, does that responsibly. Fans will give their clubs so much more if they feel treated, if they feel respected, and if they feel appreciated. The role of eSports in all of this is uh, fundamental. Blocksport really started off a few years ago with offering a fan engagement mobile platform, uh, the fan app, to eSports teams. And if we look at the last few years, what's really happened in the space of eSports, it's been um, revolutionary. It's been revolutionary to the point that it has taught and continues to teach traditional sports so much more because esports overnight developed the community uh, and overnight they've developed the engagement which far superseded the engagement of any traditional sports organization including football clubs basketball clubs etc so i see that the, the relationship between esports and traditional sports as a very very important connection and bridge uh, for the traditional sports to really learn from the success of esports. Because if you look at the tournaments around the world, I mean, China and Asia in particular are, are really at the forefront when it comes down to esports, but also America and rest of Europe have really caught up. If you look at the Counter Strike and the League of Legends with 350 million strong community, this is no longer just the gaming of uh, young boys sitting in their bedroom and playing games against uh, each other. This has now become a huge industry, which has become a, a very powerful uh, a sort of intersection and opportunity for the you know, crypto world to, to come more in, the betting companies and, and, the, and, and the gaming companies to actually uh, develop uh, a new opportunities and a new landscape. I had a long conversation with the chairman of the British Esports uh, Society, uh, who basically said that these days esports is also used to uh, uh, tackle mental health issues. There are uh, soldiers from around the world, especially the British soldiers coming from around the world, and they actually brought into the esports and gaming in order to address the traumas they went to. And uh, you know that was very. Um, 
a bit of a breakthrough in my own head. Sometimes when you are depressed, when you feel isolated, when you've suffered some sort of trauma, the uh, being part of a community is something that helps you tackle all these issues. And I think uh, we're now seeing with the uh, British government uh, and, the, and the British armed forces, a huge engagement when it comes down to sort of esports, gaming, and, and the power he actually has to tackle all these issues. And I think, you know, I remember at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, isolation, uh, the lockdowns have had a massive impact on people's mental health. And, uh, you know, uh, of course, physical activities is the best way to tackle depression and anxiety in particular. But uh, it's good to see that the 21st century innovations such as esports and gaming have also been part of that journey. I'm Bill Pascrell III, known in the industry as BP3. I'm a partner in Princeton Public Affairs Group, which is the largest state contract lobbying firm in the United States. I met three extraordinary young men. They created a, it's called AEU, the Amateur Esports Union. They're doing work across the globe, but now they're just starting to get into America, creating a union to help amateurs understand becoming professional esports players. We now have over 100 colleges that give scholarships out in America, scholarships to play esports, right? So my father said to me 20 years ago when I would watch poker on television, what are you watching poker for? On television, why don't you play? I said to my kids 10 years ago, what are you watching these esports tournaments for? Why don't you play? It's like the wave. We have arenas selling out 30,000 people to watch people play esports. Here's the bottom line. Many people in the industry haven't embraced it yet. They're now starting to embrace sporting sport esports. I think esports is gonna provide massive content to the operators, which is important. And why do I think it's gonna be successful? When we had the pandemic, people were betting on Russian table tennis. If you're betting on Russian table tennis, you're gonna bet on two people playing an eSport. So I think it's the next new generation. We're now able to do bets. New Jersey's the first state in the nation to take bets on eSports. Perhaps the best argument for eSports and the evolution of sports can be made by none other than the founder of modern video games himself, Nolan Bushnell. My name is Nolan Bushnell. I'm kind of known for inventing the video game and doing a lot of things in crypto. I believe that games have basically increased their reach and scope. When they started, they were just coin-operated games in bars and restaurants. But now, your mobile phone, your desktop computer, even your TV set is now a gaming platform. And I see that as a way that you can't talk about the game business anymore. You have to talk about the game businesses. The gaming experience from the sports books are moving from wagering on sports to wagering on esports. And esports is actually growing faster than regular sports. And we think that esports will be significantly more dominant than physical sports in the next few years. I've always felt that games and the brain are very important. And I think that aging people need to keep their brains active. And some people keep their brains active by doing various things, certain amount of travel, sometimes even just going to the racetrack and wagering. I think also what we can do with game technology is enhance learning on a whole bunch of things. Gamified learning is powerful. And I believe that the more we can embrace the game environment, the better off we are. I believe the future of gaming 
is still being invented. And in some ways, we don't know exactly how it's going to end or if it ever does. It will constantly evolve. I think the metaverse is going to help democratize the gaming space and esports technology. What we really want is more and more players who become our stars. I think that that is going to evolve with games that are playable by older players. Like right now, I can't be a good competitor in the esports world because my reaction times are too slow. So these new games, I think, can do a very interesting way of expanding massively the reach and the excitement of esports. That just about wraps up our window into the near future of sports. From AI augmented football analysis to esports, tomorrow's sports scene might be something completely different from what we see here today. What we can say for certain is that the future looks bright from here.